In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at another popular YouTube free energy device or perpetual motion device known as Boyle's flask or the self-running flask. Now I had all these pieces laying around, so this cost me nothing to make. I had the tubing, plastic bottle, the wooden molding, the rivets and all the stuff in the fittings. So this was very easy for me to put together to show my viewers if this really works or if it's just another YouTube scam. Now I looked at the design of all of them to get an idea where the liquid level would be inside the flask in relation to the height of the top of the tube and the lower portion of the tube. The tubing is quarter inch vinyl tubing and for the flask I used a plastic water bottle cut in half. The tubing enters the bottle through the plastic cap. I made a small hole, inserted the vinyl tubing, applied silicone sealant under and inside the cap, screwed it in together. Now the only purpose of this enamel wire is to keep this more stable so it doesn't flop around. These are just metal tubes with threaded inserts. That's a short section. I got my long sections. The only purpose of this bracket is to keep everything nice and square. The loop is fully adjustable. You can slide this higher or lower if desired. And the base has metal plates to keep it from flopping over. This is the closest I could make it based on all the models that I saw on YouTube. I made sure it was an average of all the different types. The spacing is very similar as well as where the liquid level in the flask would be in relation to the whole loop. Now the way this is shown on YouTube, right over here, this would be filled up with a liquid. For this demonstration, we'll be using this red liquid, so it's easy to see. I'm going to pour it right here. This is supposed to fill up quickly. You'll see the red liquid go through the tube, up, and then it's supposed to go all the way up, over, around, and then fall out. So as this is draining, it's going to be filling. Now, if this was to work as shown on YouTube, then we would have a continuous loop. This would be filling as this is draining. It would go on and on and on, perpetual motion. If that did happen, we should be able to take a small DC motor or a generator with veins sticking out like this, place it underneath the flow. This would rotate, producing electricity, an endless supply of electricity. Let's give this a try and see if it really works, as shown in the other videos. Okay, here we go. As you saw, once I filled it up, it went into the flask, through the tubing, shot up to around here, and it settled back until the liquid in the flask was at the same level as the liquid in the tube, which is totally expected, unlike what you see in the other videos. Water always wants to seek a certain level. When they match, they stop. Same principle behind a liquid line level, which is used for construction. You could take this tube 100 feet away, put a liquid in it, and it will be the same as the other side. If this line here was up here, then what would happen, right here you'd have the weight of the column of liquid inside this tube. That weight is heavier than below, so it's going to fall down, causing the liquid in the flask to rise higher up, and this line here would end up somewhere over here. It would not go that way. Now in order for the liquid to go that way, this tube would have to be longer and below the bottom of this cap. So if we extended this all the way to here, and this was filled with liquid, what would happen, you now have a column of liquid goes all the way up to the top of this curve, and that's very, very heavy. You're not going to have it go backwards this way because it's much higher from here to the top than it is from the top of the liquid here to the bottom. So it will pull, but the problem is your flask is here and the tube would have to be down here so it could never refill and continue to circulate. The first thing I'm going to try is taking this tube, place it right over the end of the vinyl tube here, suck on this end with my mouth, get the liquid in the flask to rise all the way up to this point right here. Once that's done, remove the tube, see if it continues to roll past the point, 
or if it's too heavy and wants to fall all the way down to seek that level. Here we go. And you can see it, it rolled back down. Nothing went over the top. Now let me go all the way to the very end, put my finger over it, and then when it's right here, filled with liquid, I'm going to move my finger away, and we're going to see if we can get the liquid to fall out, pulling from this side here to go all the way up and around, and come back out and keep the loop going. Let's give it a try. Alright, you saw what just happened besides me making a mess. It went to there and it pulled the whole column all the way back and around. The column of liquid between here and the top is much heavier than this column here because it's shorter. Even if we made this longer to where it was right over there, it's still going to be a little shorter than this side here. It will never pull all the way over. Doesn't make a difference if we put this even lower down here, because if you do that, the liquid level would be here. The weight of this column from here all the way to the center on top, and then you'd have less weight on this side going all the way down, because it's not going to be touching the water. It would have to be slightly above. A total scam. And not only did I prove it to you with this demonstration, but in the other video right here, you have that piece of wood, and you cannot see between the cap and the tube. And there's a reason for that. Right behind this piece of wood, there's a 90 degree elbow that goes from the bottle down over to the left. And this tube here has another 90, goes off to the left. Inside the box, underneath this whole setup, is a very small pump. What happens when you pour the liquid in? The pump is on already, you don't hear it. It gets drawn in to the pump, then the pump pushes it back and makes it look like the liquid flowed from the flask directly into the tube. You can also see in the other videos, when the liquid is poured, it goes into the flask and there's a delay. It does not show up in the tube until a few seconds. And the reason for that is because it has to go out, left, down into the pump, back up, around, 90 degree elbow and then back into the vinyl tube. You then have the pump pushing the water all the way up around and giving you the illusion that it's circulating. Nothing but a scam. You notice when I poured mine it went directly into the flask and immediately went into the tube. There was no delay between here and here. It went straight in. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.